Hi, and welcome to our International Young Profits. It's such a privilege to be here with Chris Dupre. And Thank today you. we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about, oh, well, here, here's the thing. <laughs> I was sitting in the office with him and he was just throwing out all this wisdom. And I, I was just so perplexed listening to him. And I was just thought like, I've got to get this in front of a camera. So here we are. Here welcome. We are. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And what we'll talk about is we were talking about um, profits and kind of some processes and things they go through. And I, I really loved how you talked about rejection, not like the spirit of rejection. You were talking about how rejection and the profit and how they're accepted and all these different things. Kind of share your heart on, you know, what you were sharing with me on that. Okay. <laughs> um, my, my real heart is I want to see whether it's prophetic, apostolic, whatever I got if if they can find themselves as and I, I've said this before as a son or as a daughter instead of what they do as being the main thing then suddenly everything shifts and so most prophets um, which I love and I have so many friends and I've, I've moved in in the prophetic before um, you're just just that ministry itself is different it's just not the norm the norm is um, we're sitting next to each other, there's two chairs, and history is being made right now. But suddenly the prophetic bypasses that and goes into your past, suddenly goes into your future. And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the prophet will see things and understand something. They might physically go through a, a, a feeling that they have and, and it'll be just, just kind of a, uh, a sign of what God wants to say to someone or some group. And so just the prophetic ministry is unique, and I'll just say it, it can be bizarre. And, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So, I, so I've had some, so they like, how do I do that and be a normal human being at the same time? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they can, they just have to, to embrace the gifting and put it in the package of a human being who is is loved and finds himself in a, in a larger community of people mm -hmm. because gifting unchecked um, brings bad results wow but gifting checked with friends what i call 360 i've got a couple of guys in my life that literally i can't you know if i go stand in front of a mirror i can see my face i can't see the back of my head I can turn around and look that way and i can see my back now i can't see my face and so i have a 180 view of me but I have 360 friends who see things and will talk to me. Um, a friend named Bill, I got a friend named Paul, and they're different areas. We used to live all near each other. Um, I'm getting a couple now here in, in Pennsylvania that are turning into that in my life, but I, I need that. And if you're in a prophetic ministry, whatever it is, you are going to, it's not if I will, it's when you will meet rejection. And you will meet rejection by different forms. It may be by someone who rejects literally what you've said. It may be by the way that you present something. Now they're rejecting you as a person. It could be the rejection from an entire group of people, a church that rejects prophetic ministry mm -hmm. and says things behind your back or out on you know, social media or something. But <clears throat> just moving in the prophetic, to me, you're a hero. You're, you just, wow. what, what you're doing is you're saying, I know this is not a normal conversation. I know what I'm receiving from the Lord is unique. And to give it out and to do it in a loving, kind, and generous way, um, uh, you, you might tamp down rejection, but you're never going to really get rid of it. And that, that has been the hallmark of every prophetic move, every mm -hmm. prophetic person, Old Testament, New Testament, you know that goes with it so the question isn't gosh how do i not create rejection because your life is going to the question is do i walk in such a way that i don't care what they think now you're now you're 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 manipulating your gift against other people and so it gets back to where your heart is at how you who you are in the kingdom and it all comes down to identity that really all comes down to, I don't care what your gifting is, we've said this before, my gifting has to fit into my sonship. My, my sonship is it. And, and you know, when you look at getting scientific, you know, I used to teach junior high science years ago. Mm -hmm. So who creates, when you create children, do, do you, 
is it the woman or the man? And, and the chromosome for a woman is XX. The chromosome for a man is XY. So the father dictates the gender and dictates whether someone's a son or someone's a daughter. And so therefore, a son or daughter, you can't, if I'm in a prophetic ministry and I just feel, oh, rejected and this or that, I have to remember, oh, my father created me as a son. I can't unsun myself. Wow. I don't have the power to unsun myself. And he's not going to do it. Therefore, this rejection is not connected to God. It's connected to something. It's connected to someone's fear. It's connected to uh, someone's jealousy for your, your gifting. Yeah. Um, a, lot of, a lot of rejection that prophetic people get is literally comes from a spirit of jealousy that's out there that, that they want to be seen and they want to be noticed and they want to have influence. Um, some of it is literally the package that you present. You know, you want to you wanna present something of who you're not because you've seen somebody else do something. And so therefore you shift the uniqueness of your personality. You change it to try to flow with brother so-and-so or sister Sally here. And, and suddenly you're not yourself anymore. And, and so the package is, is, is off. Um, so you'd, I, I just, in, in my own life, when those times have come, I just have to ask wisdom, okay, uh, I, I'm going to deal with rejection in whatever way it comes. Is there, are there wisdom issues as to why it's happening? Is it happening because am I initiating it? If I'm not, then I remove everything off me that needs to come off me. And then I, I realize I can't change someone else. Yeah. And so therefore, my security and, and my, my weight to move forward comes from the fact that my father created me as a son with a gift. And he's walking with me, and he's proud of me as well. I mean, he wants me to, he wants me to get up when I fall flat. He, he keeps coming, and the father in Luke 15, um, I mean, that son was in, in a life of debauchery, and he comes and turns around and the father runs, and it says that he fell on his neck and kissed him. And that word is is what's called a present progressive verb, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which means he kissed him and he kissed him and he kissed him and he kissed him. So he mm -hmm. wanted to kiss away every. I kiss away that prostitute. I kiss away the debauchery. I kiss away the drunkenness. I kiss away the gambling. I kiss away every. And he kept kissing him, um, because mm -hmm. he wanted to reaffirm to him, "This is my boy." And when the son said. Uh, Father, I've, in his, he was practicing. I've sinned against heaven against you. I'm not worthy to be your son. Make me like one of your servants. And so the father heard the first one when the son said, Father, I, I've sinned against heaven against you. And the father let him keep going. The second thing he said, I'm not worthy to be your son. His father cut him right off because that's false. First one was good. You repented. Mm -hmm. Second one, that's not true. You're my son. Wow. And so he said, now go get the robe, go get the ring, go get the shoes. This is my boy. Everything's back. Y y your, your identity is what I say it is. It's not mm -hmm. what your brain says it is. It's not what your sin says it is. And so those in prophetic minutes, the same kind of a thing. We, we have to come back to the core of, of who we are, find our confidence in a Father that, that runs to us, that goes with us. And uh, I, I don't, my gifts and callings are without repentance. I'm not going to lose them. Yeah. Um, so therefore, anyone's anyone's words against me, they they can't uh, they can only attack um, something within me that I end up believing that I pull myself away, and so my gifts become useless. They don't. They're not gone. They're just useless because I believe something out there that's untrue. Mm -hmm. And so I just I want to speak to prophets, your heroes. Go for it. I really go for it. But do it biblically so that when you present it, you're doing it out of love, you're doing it with a servant heart. Everyone that moves in the prophetic ministry should be the biggest servant in that room. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's servanthood, it's sonship. Yeah, I agree. And let's talk a little bit about maybe, because I was in conference this weekend listening to you lead this, and what it seems is that you give your sons and daughters confidence. Talk about fathers giving sons and daughters confidence well that's all i can give it at a certain point i can i can teach one you know i've got three daughters and i taught them how to ride bikes and and but what is the, that analogy right there is is it's to train them to ride away from me with confidence wow i mean everything so i do as a dad is is to 
build in them confidence. It's like, you know, when someone gets married, when I, when I walk my daughters down the aisle, um, my prayer had been, Lord, I pray that, that the confidence of being loved by me, now that they can find this man, it's a different love. My love is a securing love. Their love is a reproducing love. It's a different wow. kind of a thing. So um, confidence as a father, that's what you want to instill. You want in, in any arena, confidence. That's why you hear these people say, yeah, my dad said I could do anything I wanted, be anything I wanted. And you know, you always hear these kinds of testimonies um, uh, from people who actually went out and did something that other people didn't do because there was a confidence that was built. So my, my heart is to do that. You know, in the conference, I, I it was with um, some others that are they're younger, and, um, but they're, they're doing great things. Um, but I, I want them to, f to be able to speak with the same authority um, uh, and an even greater authority each time that they speak, each time that they share, so that they're seeing, and it, confidence is really this. If I believe God's with me, I'm confident. Yeah. If I'm on my own, if I'm a turtle with its head stuck out and I don't know where I am, um, my lack of confidence comes when I'm not secure that he's with me. But over the years, uh, I get less and less of that because he'll never leave me. Wow. I love that. I can sit here for hours talking to him about the father heart, just about releasing sons and daughters, having them be more confident in who they are and what God's put in their heart. But Chris, thank you so much. You've Thanks been such a me. blessing. You're going to be a great blessing to us. I keep pulling that in. But um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. All right.